All right, so in today's video, I'm going to be walking you through all of the steps for creating this simple pattern. So what this does is show you how to take a simple module or a grid and turn it into a pattern that you can change the extents, you can change the tile size, you can even change the overall form for this design. So if you're excited to learn a few more tips and tricks, this one is going to be relating to creating patterns. You can create modules for tile patterns and designs like that. So with that being said, thank you very much for being here and let's get right into it. All right, so to start, we are going to be creating a triangular grid. So as you can see here, all we need to do is bring in this triangular grid and change the extents to grow the grid. For now, at the beginning, what's important is that you have a few of them so you can select one and then modify it and apply the entire design to the entire set of grids so with that we'll get into turning it into a surface once we have that into a surface then we select just one of the grids or one of the triangles now this is a grafted set but you want it to have a flattened one so you can just create that design on this one triangle now we can hide all of this and see that what we're going to do is once we have one triangle selected and you can pick any triangle, then you want to deconstruct it. So then we'll go to deconstruct BREP and once again, this is going to be a grafted, but what we want to do is flatten it. This way we only pick one of the edges. So we'll deconstruct it, pick one of the edges. And once we have one of those edges, then this is what we're going to do to modify the pattern. We're going to first offset and get the midpoint. Then we're going to scale down that line segment for it to be shorter. Once we have that done, then we can extract the start and end point and create an arc based off of three points from the start, the midpoint that we offset, and then the end point. Once we have this, then we know that our initial line segment, which is this one, is from here to here. We need to create the start and end point of that line and create the two little segments that then close off that pattern and creates this shape. So if we hide all of this, all we're doing is we're scaling down the line segment, we're creating an arc and we're connecting it to do that to the entire triangle. So instead of flattening it now for one of the line segments, we're going to graft it. And you'll see here that now we have, oh, we're gonna graph this one. So we'll have this one flattened. We're going to graph it, why? Because then it'll do this design to this line segment, to this line segment, and to this line segment. And once we have that done, then we know that we can graph the entire grid and apply that pattern to the entire rest of the set. So as you can see here, what we can do is if we leave it at one, it leaves it triangulated and with an arc from beginning to the end. This is also a nice design. The offset, if we leave it at zero, it doesn't offset it. And if we start offsetting it, it creates the arc. 
the idea was to be able to scale that line and be able to offset that pattern like this. And so what it looks like, it's this circle that is created in between the three different sets of triangles, and it creates a lot of variability. Now here at the end, we can leave it like this, or we can also interject anywhere in between this pattern and create more complexity. So we can go, let's say, to this curve and go to a fillet. And then bring in a slider. So I'll go here to 1.5 and override this curve and hide these two. So we can see the pattern now rounding this portion off. Now it's not going to be as visible as when we do this. The other thing that this can do is create let's say a module that can have some porosity. So if you use this as a tile on the exterior, you can have the water be able to filtrate into the grind here and then have this be the solid. So technically we could use this as a way to uh, create density and porosity. So let's go here. And we can leave this at zero. And I'll label this here, fill it. And what we did with this pattern, which is a pretty simple pattern, we can also do to many other types of grids. So this is a triangular grid. But if you went through and did the exact same set of steps with a rectangular grid or with a hexagonal grid, you can achieve very similar designs. So what I'm going to do is have this available for you to download on my website, competidavid.com. Um, if you got lost somewhere or you're like, hey, I don't really understand how all of this plugs in, you can always go and download it and see how everything fits together. Um, like I said, the cool thing about this is we can have this very large array but the critical portion is basically down here. But what expanding this allows you to do is visualize this in a larger context. So thank you very much for being here. If you have any questions, let me know in the comments below. I will be doing a few renders and showing you what this could apply to in terms of a project. And um, yeah, hope to see you in the next video. All right, so using re-render AI, what I did was apply the pattern to a few different scenes and then be able to show you in a more realistic context what this pattern could be applied to. So this is an exterior of a home um, with the pattern applied. This is what an accent wall on an interior wall would look like. And then this is more of a traditional type of tile pattern that you would find, let's say, on a fountain or on more of an art piece. And then this is another one where you can see the pattern arrayed and what it would look like, let's say in a bathroom tile. And this would be another example of what it would look like in more of an accent wall design on an interior of a home. So just wanted to show you a few of the cases in which this could apply to and um, any pattern can be created with Grasshopper and you can then use that to create custom design and tile designs for your home or for your projects.